Psalm 23. Good morning, Ms. Anders. Amidst online learning. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Because I trust in God, I'm not panicking. I'm taking time to breathe, to take care of myself, to look within and to connect to God and God's love. Aware of that love, I am inspired to love others. I am able to forgive, to reach out, Yes, it is a scary time right now, and I don't know what's going to happen. There are times when I just want to shout or, or cry. There are moments, minutes, hours, when I can feel overwhelmed. But then I remember that I am not alone. Someone brings me soup or sends me flowers. A neighbor offers to do some shopping for me. I call a friend and they answer the phone and my fear subsides. When I stop and look around, I realize how fortunate I am. Even the things that provide my greatest challenges can also be my comforts my joys, my abundance. I'm not rich, but my life is more abundant than I realize. Sometimes I just stop and count my blessings and imagine the ways that I bless others. And in those moments, my cup runneth over. You know, there is goodness and mercy in this world, and I am part of it. And nothing can take away my ability to love or my experience of being loved. I am not alone. I will never be alone. I will always be with and belong to God.
Every time that we gather, virtually or in person, we commit ourselves to being a safe place. A safe place for you, for your loved ones, for your children or your parents, for your hopes and for your hurts. It is our intent to be community with you, to love you as you are. We are not all the same, and we not only acknowledge that, but we celebrate the fact that we don't all vote the same way or have the same ways of speaking about God or Jesus, but we are always learning how to love each other, even when we disagree, even when we've been wrong or wronged. The land upon which Jubilee Church sits was home, comfort, and faith to many First Nations peoples, including the Petun, Wendat, Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Mississauga of the Credit. Toronto is part of a vast territory from Quebec through Ontario, Michigan, and Ohio, all around the Great Lakes, covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. This agreement recognized that this land has enough space and resources to sustain many peoples, many nations. When settlers were invited into this agreement, they did not honor the simple premise to take only what you need. Leave some for others and keep it clean. Instead, they divided the land into distinct properties and moved people into restricted areas. We recognize that there is history, wisdom, and spirit that transcends borders below our feet. We acknowledge that European settlers came with an intent to colonize and not to cooperate. And to that end, Indigenous peoples have been under attack from that time to this day. We commit ourselves to reconciling with our Indigenous siblings and living on this land with respect for the wisdom and love for the people who have been here for thousands of years and are here now. We are an affirming community, which means that we are a safe and welcoming place to all those who express their identity in the LGBTQ2S plus communities, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, two-spirited. Our community will always include those who are non-binary, identify with other pronouns like they, them, and help to broaden our understanding of gender, identity, and God. We are all created in God's image, meant and empowered to reveal, receive, and share love. We recognize and give thanks for our many differences and support each other as we live unique lives. Jubilee is intentionally anti-racist, which doesn't mean that we yet fully appreciate the many perspectives that are part of our community, but we acknowledge a colonial perspective that can often miss the realities of diverse black lives, Asian lives, and other lives that have been misrepresented, targeted, or ignored by those in positions of power. We intentionally stand with anybody who has been told to go back where you came from. We lament our role in allowing racism to go unchecked, and we commit ourselves to equity, the true hope of equal opportunity, voice, and dignity for all people. We do this work imperfectly, but we do it because we want to celebrate God's love and action in the full diversity of humanity. We see God and God's love in you. And so, here we are, together but not the same. Many paths have led to this place and this moment. However you come to be here, welcome. We are all God's children, together. For the time being, Jubilee remains closed for in-person worship. This is how we love and protect our neighbors even as we love and protect ourselves. There is a stay-at-home order in effect in Ontario and we encourage you to do just that. Please stay home, stay safe, and help keep your neighbors safe. We will continue to share in virtual worship, phone calls, notes, supportive actions, and prayers. Remember always that the church is not a building, it is a community. And we continue to find new ways to be community and to share the love of God and the ministry of Jesus. As you have come to expect, Haley Brown will be hosting a check-in for kids and parents today at 2 p.m. The Zoom link is on the Jubilee website. Coming up on Thursday, May 6th at 7.30 p.m., it's another I Know Something You Don't Know. Reverend Seelai, 
well, that's me, uh, has decided to make a presentation on something of great spiritual importance. Champagne. The region and the wine. Mostly the wine. Spiritual, absolutely. Dom Perignon was a monk credited with the creation or the accidental discovery of Champagne. Reputed to have cried out to his fellow monks, Come quickly, brothers, I am tasting the stars. Of course, they were amazed that he was speaking in English. Um, I will share some stories, pictures, and probably a few facts about Champagne that you might find interesting, including how that story about Dom Perignon is really mostly bubbles and not much wine. Also, how and why you've been drinking champagne all wrong for all of these years. It's a social time and a fun time, and I hope that you will join us on May 6th at 7.30 p.m. The Zoom link is on the Jubilee website. You know that I always want pictures. Pictures of spring, pictures of life, pictures of you getting your vaccination. These are so important in our worship services, and I really appreciate all of your contributions. And as May is just about upon us, I'm asking if you might also send me pictures of mothers. Maybe your mother. Maybe someone who has been a mother to you. When we come to Mother's Day on May 9th, it would be wonderful to have pictures of those people who have nurtured you, brought out the best in you. The people that you will be thinking of on Mother's Day. And some will be women, some may not. Mother's Day is a day full of emotion and we want to do our best to provide comfort and warmth, inspiration and hope. We want to reflect some of the love that you have received and the love that you share when you think about Mother's Day. And here's a thought, here's a consideration from the Mission and Service Fund of the United Church of Canada. me in so many ways. I can't think of a better way to honor you than to make a difference for others. Mother's Day can be more meaningful, it can be more sensitive, it can be more inclusive, it can be more compassionate. It can be more generous. Mother's Day can be more. And that's why when you make a special gift through Mission and Service this Mother's Day, you will directly support families in need in Canada and around the world. You will help provide things like parenting classes, respite care, health clinics, safe shelter, and education to families who need it. And when you make a gift, you can choose to send any one of a variety of free e-cards that I guarantee you, you won't find on the shelves of your local card shop. Give a gift to help families and let someone in your life know they are your inspiration. Together, we can make Mother's Day more. You know that I'm always keen to receive limericks as well as pictures, but the truth of it is some of us just aren't poets. So another invitation is being offered. How about sharing what you believe in 12 words? Could be serious, could be silly, could be fun. You can do it by email. Just send me a message about what you believe in 12 words or less and we'll add your beliefs to the Sunday services. And yes, all of these messages have been in exactly 12 words each. My father will be so proud. And as long as you're being creative, I have found two online auction sites that would make it really easy to have a Jubilee silent auction. 
I know a professional karaoke singer and facilitator who runs karaoke events online. And I'll bet you know some things and have some ideas. So let's try something. I don't want to run an event, but I will be glad to help. And I know that there are others who would help. But somebody has to start the ball rolling. So if you have an idea or a project in mind, let me know what you want to do and I will do my best to get you some folks to help make it happen. You know, last year we had our own 5K walk. We had a cookie sale, a virtual concert, a dinner that you didn't have to attend. What might we do this year? So come on, let's, let's try something new. For those of you who are journaling, allow us to offer these prompts for the week. If you could have any celebrity chef cook you dinner, who would it be? And what would you have them make? And who are you? Everything that happens at Jubilee has two sources of inspiration and support. The first is God, and the second is you. You make this ministry possible as you invest your time, your gifts, your love, and your money. And we don't take any of it for granted. From legacy gifts and wills to PAR, e-transfers, checks sent in the mail, your continued investment means that we are able to be church in a new age, meeting people wherever they may be and inviting them to engage with a God who is met and experienced in diversity and love. A God who is with us in the hardest of times and the best of times. A God who is with us right now in this moment and will be with us in all the moments ahead and generations to come. Thank you for your donations, your investment, and your love. As I come to light the Christ candle, I am aware that the challenge in a time of lockdown and restricted movement for a church or just for people is how can we be community? Not just community by all playing a game in the park together, but, but community that means that we are seen and not lost, that we are of value to each other and not just biding our time. How can we matter to each other? Some folks have gone back to writing letters. Some never stopped. Some send cards, you know, just a few words to say, I see you. Thank you for what you did, or thank you for being who you are. Some folks make phone calls, sometimes light and breezy, other times deeper. Some have email conversations, sometimes spread over days. I have been part of five deep conversations this week, email and phone, and I am aware of at least three others of which I was not part. And you know what? Based on those eight, I know that there were dozens, maybe hundreds in our community. I had a long talk with laughter and tears about caring for a loved one with Alzheimer's disease. And as we talked, the distance between us faded, and I believe that we both felt less alone. I had a talk about self-care, depression, and the struggles of living in isolation. But we also talked about all the things for which we are grateful. The support and the love that is so easy to take for granted when things are good. I had a conversation about parenting challenging in any time, almost staggeringly difficult in these days. I had a conversation that was nearly all laughter, and the weight of the world was floated off our shoulders. I had a conversation that was mostly silence. A few words here and there, no answers, no advice. We just shared space together, virtually, but it was very real. In the silence, we were not alone. And you've had them too, haven't you? Conversations that don't solve problems or fix things, but share our humanity, break through our isolation and create community. Community in which we are seen and valued. 
not for our expertise, but for our humanity. In these conversations, not only is our love shared, but the light of Christ is revealed. Talk, love, share the light of Christ. The 23rd Psalm in the King James Version, read by Rev. Marlene Britton. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The 23rd Psalm, read in the Message Translation by Kevin Collins. God, my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Even when the way goes through Death Valley, I'm not afraid. When you walk at my side... Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. You revive my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life.
Gospel, chapter 11, 11 through 18. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because, because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the father knows me and I know the father. I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my father. of the 23rd Psalm in the New Revised Standard Version, read by Susan Jane Bino. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. I invite you to pray with me. Holy and loving God, may the words from my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts gathered near and far be pleasing to you. Amen. So there are few pieces of scripture found in the Christian canon that are more widely recognized than the 23rd Psalm. A friend of mine has this great story about going to visit an elderly woman in the hospital. And when she asked him to read the 23rd Psalm, he did so. He read the same version that I read for you earlier. But when he was done, she was not happy, not happy at all. She straightened up and told him to read the real version. Of course, what she meant was the King James Version. She wanted to hear the psalm in 17th century English. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Now, those of you who are around my age will likely tweak just a little bit to the valley of the shadow of death phrase. If you are around my age, it is likely a part of your pop culture consciousness. As I walk through the valley of the 
valley of the shadow of death. I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left. Cause I'm That's Coolio and Gangsta's Paradise from the 1995 film Dangerous Minds. The video features a hilarious attempt at toughness on Michelle Pfeiffer's part. And if you haven't watched the music video for Gangsta's Paradise since 1995, or perhaps you weren't alive in 1995, or you just perhaps missed this particular gem, it is worth checking out. One of my favorite episodes of the Do Justice podcast that I ever recorded was about Psalm 23 and its prominence in the 90s rap scene, mostly because the racial themes continue even into today, but also because the nostalgia it evokes from my childhood. Even though I walk through the darkest valley the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. The music is nostalgic, but also this psalm is nostalgic. There are many pieces of scripture with idyllic imagery and the promise of God's steadfastness and comfort but because it has become so enmeshed within our consciousness, for me at least, it's the familiarity itself which I find calming. Like watching and re-watching your favorite sitcom episodes over and over again. The characters are familiar. You know the story arc, there are no surprises. This is a way, a legitimate, documented way that many people deal with anxiety. And anxiety has only increased this year in a time of pandemic. Now there are many interpretations of this psalm. I read a Jewish commentary once that suggested the psalm is actually a dream. And the scene is from the perspective of a lamb who is about to be slaughtered. Slaughtered in sacrifice. The lamb is about to die, but why should it be sad? Because God has allowed it to sit and hang out in such a beautiful pasture. I'm still having trouble wrapping my head around that one. But I've also read reflections by preachers in South Africa who see it as a call to be poked and prodded by that rod and staff, a shepherd's tool to get the herd moving. That it is God who is the shepherd, the greatest authority for their sheep, not the governments of oppression and colonialism. Now this is the stuff that gets me fired up. This is the stuff we regularly talk about in Resistance Church, how God prods us into action and resistance. And yet, I don't know about you, but I've been really, really in need of some comfort lately. I've been trying all morning to record this sermon this is my sixth attempt. I'm not even joking. I have been trying to find a quiet place to record the prayers. My house is small and in a lockdown, there is nowhere for any of us to go. Both kids are participating in school online and let me tell you, writing a regional email with gym class happening above your head and a grade one science class about the virtue of slugs happening beside you, it's very, very hard to concentrate. I've been attempting to write a thesis while playing referee for two children who generally do get along, but have been cooped up together for months and their relationship has suffered for it. And I try to be comforting to them. I try to reassure them that everything is going to be okay 
I try to keep some normalcy in our home, but it's hard. And I mean, I know that my family, we're pretty fortunate. Over the past year, we have not had to fear losing our job or our home. We've remained healthy and together. And yet, COVID fatigue is a real thing. And I try to be comforting, but the anxiety remains. And sometimes it just feels like I can't do all the things. And the things that I am doing, I'm doing it all wrong. I'm doing everything wrong. Nothing is good enough. And I'm failing so much. Like I said this morning, I've been trying to find a quiet place to record this sermon. I am done. I'm over it. I kind of just want to check out, crawl back into bed and eat brownies and watch The Princess Bride. Can I do that? Can I just opt out? I'm not just talking about all the things, all the things that have to happen, all the things to do. I mean, sometimes I just want to not care so much anymore. And maybe tell myself that God doesn't really care either about how I feel or what I do. God won't miss me. So I'm just going to opt out of all of it. You can find me upstairs in bed, hiding under my grandma's quilt. Actually, no, don't find me. I'm fine on my own. And yet, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Now, first of all, if I am to dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long, I sure hope that house is cleaner than my house is right now. But second, this is the part in the psalm where our English just doesn't do a very good job of conveying what the original Hebrew was trying to get across. Now, in case anyone is rolling their eyes, and I totally get it, about having to have a language lesson on a Sunday morning, I don't really get to use anything from my biblical Hebrew course very often, so I'm hoping that you'll humor me just for a moment. The image we have here that we have in the King James and the New Revised Standard, or basically any English version, version rather, that I have ever come across, is that as we move through our lives, God will quite pleasantly just sort of follow along with goodness and mercy, all very sweet and gentle-like. The Hebrew word in question here, the one that has been translated as to follow, is hadaf. Hadaf means to chase, to hunt, or to pursue. So this psalm could also read, God is going to hunt you down with their goodness and mercy. There is no escaping it. It's kind of a strange image, right? Just you wait. I'm going to get you with this goodness. You don't have a choice but to be confronted by this mercy. So it makes me wonder if the author of this psalm is making an intentional choice about trusting in God's love. God's love, goodness, and mercy. I wonder whether it's a choice or 
rather just surrendering to the inevitable, just giving into the fact that God will keep pursuing regardless of what we do or say or think or believe. And that maybe we just say, fine, <laughs> you win. And I suppose that we're stuck with one another in this crazy soup of life, the dark valleys and the green pastures. Thy will be done. But also maybe if God is pursuing me, if God wants me, if God is eager to be with me, maybe I'm actually worth being pursued. And maybe if God still wants me, then I can want me too and be a little bit kinder to myself in all of this. Maybe I can just surrender to the idea that I don't always have to be the one doing the comforting. I can be the receiver of comfort too. God's comfort, which remains despite anger and frustration, like a parent soothing their small toddler. And I'm hoping as I tell this story that many of you can relate to this as well. When my children were little, one of our favorite books to read together was a story by Margaret Wise Brown called The Runaway Bunny. In the book, the little bunny is upset with its mother, so the bunny decides to run away. The book describes all the ways that the little bunny will run away, and the mother describes all the ways that she will find him. So I'd like you all to get comfy and snuggle up for story time, because I think that this story, this classic story of two opinionated rabbits nicely sums up this psalm the chase and pursuit of a lovingly steadfast parent devoted to their child, no matter what. Once there was a little bunny who wanted to run away. So he said to his mother, I am running away. If you run away, said his mother, I will run after you for you are my little bunny. If you run away, said the little bunny, I will become a fish in a trout stream and I will swim away from you. If you become a fish in a trout stream, said his mother, I will become a fisherman and I will fish for you. If you become a fisherman, said the little bunny, I will become a rock on the mountain high above you. If you become a rock on the mountain high above me, said his mother, I will become a mountain climber and I will climb to where you are. If you become a mountain climber, said the little bunny, I will be a crocus in a hidden garden. If you become a crocus in a hidden garden, said his mother, I will be a gardener and I will find you. If you are a gardener and find me, said the little bunny, I will be a bird and fly away from you. If you become a bird and fly away from me, said his mother, I will be a tree that you come home to. If you become a tree, said the little bunny, I will become a sailboat and I will sail away from you. If you become a sailboat and sail away from me, said his mother, I will become the wind and blow you where I want you to go. If you become the wind and blow me, said the little bunny, I will join a circus and fly away on a flying trapeze. If you go flying on a flying trapeze, said his mother, 
I will be a tightrope walker, and I will walk across the air to you. If you become a tightrope walker and walk across the air, said the little bunny, I will become a little boy and run into a house. If you become a little boy and run into a house, said the mother bunny, I will become your mother and catch you up in my arms and hug you. Shucks, said the bunny. I might as well just stay where I am and be your little bunny. And so he did. Have a carrot, said the mother bunny. Beside the still waters Along the good paths And through the dark valleys All of my days God's mercy follows All of my days God's love surrounds holy and loving God. In our joys and our sorrows, we find you. We encounter you relentlessly pursuing us, even in the deepest and most dire of places. Today we pray for those who continue to live within encampments, those who during a third wave of pandemic have no other safe place to be. We pray for those who experience the ongoing consequences of poverty and systemic inequality. We pray for God's care. We pray for God's comfort. We pray for those who continue to find themselves isolated, those whose loneliness pulls them into valleys, 
those whose mountains of grief seem insurmountable, those who long to feel the embrace of their friends and their loved ones. We pray for God's care. We pray for God's comfort. We pray for those who are persecuted, who are violated, who are in danger. We pray for those of us who are black and indigenous and have been targeted by law enforcement and the inertia of hundreds of years of violence, scapegoating, gaslighting, and hostility. We pray for those of us who are Asian and have been the subject of scorn, violence, and blame for a pandemic that has disproportionately affected poor and racialized communities in this country. We pray for God's care. We pray for God's comfort. All the days of our lives, all of our days, we pray for those who are in need of your comfort. And yes, we know we are all in need of your comfort. But God, we also know that your justice and mercy will follow us. That we are relentlessly pursued by your calls to aid in the bringing about of your kingdom. And no matter what, whatever we do or feel, you will hunt us down and wrap us up in your arms, in your love. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Go forth from this moment, and know that wherever you have been, However you come to be here, wherever you are going, whatever comes next, know that you are not alone. God is with you. Jesus walks with you, walks with us all, and the Holy Spirit surrounds you, fills you, surrounds us, fills us all, connecting us to each other, to all of creation, and always to God. We are not alone. You are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.